Braun Challenge. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Every lifeboat has its own story. Many years of research and development and two very different fundraising efforts resulted in both E09, the Braun Challenge, and E08, Dougie and Donna B, entering service on the River Thames. New technologies, RNLI led design, almost 900 horsepower and twin water jets give it a response speed of over 40 knots. These critical minutes enable us to reach people in distress 25% faster than we could before. I think the value of the RNI on the Thames is, is clear really from the amount of activity there is. We have the two busiest stations in the country based on the Thames. A unique requirements to the nature of the call outs that we have on the Thames are probably different to, or are different to the ones mainly experienced from the coastal uh, lifeboat. The Braun Challenge was fundraised by an apprentice style contest between 10 leading businesses. The Dougie and Donna B, like 60% of our lifeboats, is a symbol of a couple's lasting legacy. To me, you know, we've had the London Olympics now, we've inspired a generation. People are going to get out and hopefully get involved in these sports like rowing, like canoeing, like sailing. And I have a, I have a nine-year-old and I have an 11-year-old and I want them to feel secure going on the water and getting involved in those sports. And having a boat like this makes me feel a bit safer as a parent. Does anyone know what the RNLI stands for? Our volunteer crews also teach people to stay safe. Absolutely. Now, what do you think might be dangerous on the River Thames? and what to do in an emergency. One, two, three. The River Thames is London's coastline, and just like a beach, if it's not respected, there is some potential for harm. But when our few safety messages are heeded, the Thames has so much to offer, for children to discover and for everyone to enjoy. I like it, it's cool. I want to come in by myself, but I'm not sure if I'm confident. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, he's alive, don't touch him. Oh, look. These are some of the 100,000 people who have contact with the Thames every day, and they all value our service. They're really great people to have nearby. Partly because if something was to go wrong, we know we have people on standby who can help us straight away, but also because there's such a great range of skills, we know that there's people there who can help us out in an emergency. S, spot the danger. A, always go with a friend. F, <laughs> find the signs. E, emergency call 999. Some of our rescues do become very high profile, having responded to a report of a person in the water, and once he was safely rescued, it became obvious a man had risked life and limb, foolishly putting himself and others at great risk. But more importantly, all of our lifeboat crews are able to provide a high level of first aid. Cosmo Skur, volunteer lifeboat crewman and A&E doctor, provided immediate treatment to the collapsed Oxford Bowman in the 2012 boat race later accompanying him all the way to the hospital. 30% of our incidents are to vessels in difficulty. And just like lifeboat crews, every person on board should always be wearing a life jacket, even babies. A disabled boat was swept broadside into Richmond Lock and Weir by the strong, outgoing stream. Our lifeboat crews here at Chiswick have now rescued in excess of a thousand people. Not surprisingly, a good number of those rescues were preventable, or had someone taken on board some sensible advice, they may not have gotten into difficulty in the first place. Thoroughly checking your engines, your equipment and fuel before setting off reduces the likelihood of a boat breaking down, risking those on board. Tell others where you are going when you plan to get there, and what to do if you don't. Check the local weather and tides, always preparing for the worst. When navigating in an unknown area, use local charts to identify dangers. 
Get training for the type of boat that you're planning to operate and always carry a portable means of calling for help. Maintaining a good lookout is always important, but especially at night. Lifeboat crews are given the best training possible. Learning what to do and simulating worst case scenarios gives our crews the skills, experience and confidence that's needed to safely rescue those in danger. So what happened? We capsized and we had to get into the life raft. Okay, well there's five of you, no injuries. Excellent. £1,255 is fundraised every year to keep each crew trained to save others.